every year, hundreds of thousands of babies are born. And as some of us, or maybe even most of us know, babies are pretty expensive. At least that's what we know. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> some parents are forced to make the decision of whether or not to move because of paid parental leave laws. So if you don't know what paid parental leave laws are, is when you work at a job, you are expecting a baby, and in some jobs, they aren't forced to pay you for the time you leave work to care for your I personally have seen friends and family members have to move areas, countries, to maybe not countries, but like states or even cities because they want to have a safe, no, a stable financial future for their future child. So every country, state, or city might have different paid parental leave laws. So today I want to talk to you guys about how U.S. paid parental leave laws stack up against other countries' paid parental leave laws. In addition, our presidential nominees and their stance on paid parental leave laws. So I want to start with how we stack up against other countries. So, so, we, so the U.S. as noted in a Huffington Post article posted on February 21st, 2013, is one of only three countries in the world that does not have mandatory paid parental leave laws. Also in that article, they go further into detail and list the other two countries, those being Papua New Guinea and Swaziland. The thing is, the U.S. is the only industrialized nation that doesn't have any mandatory paid parental leave laws. Another interesting fact is that the U.S. has about 30 times the population of those other two countries combined, with Swaziland having about 1.3 million people and Papua New Guinea having about 7 million people. So now that I've gone over that, I want to go over the Republican nominee for President Donald J. Trump and his stance on paid parental leave. So in a Huffington Post article posted two years later, almost three, on August 14, 2016, his stance is he wants to provide a mandatory six-week paid parental leave for all expecting parents. And then in a CNN article posted on September 14, 2016, it goes further into detail on how he plans to pay for that. He, pay, he plans to pay for that by cleaning up any fraudulent claims to the unemployment insurance program in the nation. In addition, he wants to make paid parental leave, uh, uh, he wants to make any child care expenses tax deductible, but not for everyone in the nation, only for families who make under $500,000 or individuals who make under $250,000. So that's the majority of the country. So now that I've gone over the Republican nominee, let's go over the Democratic nominee, Hillary Clinton. In her stance, as reported on the Huffington Post article, the same one as that reported on Donald's stance, that was posted on August 14, 2016. He, she wants a mandatory 12-week paid parental leave policy for everyone in the nation. But in the same CNN article posted in September 14, 2016, she signed to pay for it by raising taxes on the rich. In addition, in that same article, talks about how a couple years ago, she did not pass a demo democratic bill they're trying to pass that would raise taxes, payroll taxes, on the middle class. So they would raise it by 0 0.2%, which is about like $1.30. And she doesn't want to tax the middle class, she only wants to tax the rich. So now that I've gone over the current nominee's stances on paid parental leave, and also how the U.S. stacks against other countries and how different countries, cities, even zip codes have different paid parental leave laws. I want to leave you guys with one thing. Next time you see a baby in a stroller, just think about what sacrifices the parents have 